Hello and welcome. In our Beating Our Lords segment today, we have someone who's as cool as a cucumber and manages to keep calm in the toughest of situations as per his teammates. The lockdown period is perhaps the best test of his leadership. We have with us Amir Jalil, CCO and Chairman of the Manan Loblin Task Group. Hi Amir. Thank you. Thank you for your very, very kind introduction, Vita. <laughs> Tell me, how are you keeping your cool in such testing times? Uh, you know, I had some early sort of uh, scare. My son was abroad and then, you know, I had to get him, I had to fly him out at a sort of in a day's notice. Uh, but otherwise, uh, you know, I, um, I adapt, I think, very quickly. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I think that is, uh, that's the reason why uh, I kind of uh, sort of look as if I'm calm. Internally, there's, you know, uh, major, uh, you know, always strife going on in my head. Uh, I'm carrying, uh, you know, huge responsibility of a, quite a big agency, of people's welfare mm -hmm. and all that. But uh, at the same time, I, I, I like to show uh, that things are in control, things are cool, because uh, somewhere I think uh, you know my my uh, my training uh, has been like that. You know, uh, I have frequently been in crisis situations, you know, of uh, of various kinds, and you are always <laughs> protected, right. You are in front of a client. You have, don't have a script. It's, it's actually going to be, uh, you know, uh, the question is just about to be popped to you. Uh, that, so what's the great answer that you have got to this huge problem that we have? And you're thinking on your feet and internally you're just always calculating, calculating, calculating. And somehow, just mm -hmm. at the time when you need to talk, something comes out. So a lot of training, I guess. Okay. And tell me, what has been the biggest shift uh, or change in the creative world post the onslaught of COVID-19? I think, uh, I think, uh, spatial chemistry, I call it spatial chemistry. The idea of creative people actually okay. coming together and sitting in the same space, talking to each other, mm -hmm to each other, the way, you know, uh, uh, creators used to brainstorm in the same room, three, four people sitting in the same room, two people sitting in the same room. Spatial chemistry has taken a big, big, big hit. But spatial chemistry is something that we learned, you know, as creative people. We, it was natural to learn it at that time. So that has got, uh, has taken a hit. But I see uh, a lot of uh, people uh, from the office completely forgetting about the space. So I am also okay. learning that, and in a sense, you know, I'm trying to practice that with you in this room, uh, where I am with you, and just trying to be natural, as if we are sitting across. And so, yes, that's one thing that I see uh, in creativity. Second thing okay. I, uh, I see is uh, expectations. Uh, are a lot more and a lot more fine-tuned from clients. Mm -hmm. So what is happening okay. is a lot of clients are actually have defocused from the larger things, the bigger mm -hmm. business issues, this, that, and all that. And everybody is concentrating on brands, on what is okay. needed for the brands. And you will agree that the time is so delicate and so mm -hmm. fragile for brands right now that everybody actually wants to contribute. Everybody wants to be part of every little thing. So that challenge has become huge. So forming <laughs> of a WhatsApp group and every one minute, 30 seconds, some part of the client or some part of the agency team, you know, being on it active all the time, noticing a little thing. But I think, you know, at edit point uh, 023, I think that was not uh, that that thing there was not right. And maybe you could replace it with something else. Those sort of finer things uh, hmm. have... Uh, have sort of popped up uh, okay. in our work. Mm -hmm. and, uh, everybody knows everything about everything that is happening. 
<laughs> so information overload like never before never before Yeah. Also, Amir, earlier it was about uh, sales or maybe pushing products out aggressively in the market to some level. Now it appears that most brands are just engaging with the consumers and trying to keep the brand love alive. Do you see that change immediately post the lockdown? I think people are going to immediately start focusing on revenues, on sales, on market, you know, uh, expansion, all of those things uh, immediately. So it's good that right now they are focusing on other things. Uh, there are products that are really uh, flying off the shelves, so there is no problem. No sort of you know you don't need uh, sales oriented work for them to fly off the shelf. And there are products that are not selling at all, so you don't need and you know that they'll never sell at the time because they're just not available. So you again don't need sort of sales oriented uh, messages for them. So in both cases. people are focusing more on the engagement more on what what they mean to a consumer rather than actually uh, mm-hmm. you know trying to push be pushy about products and i think that's great at the, at this point that's what is needed okay but tell me how are your agency specifically approaching the lockdown are, you, are they looking at it as an adversity or an opportunity see we uh we're trying uh, to deal with uh, probably the biggest you know human crisis ever uh, hmm. we're trying to be you know humane uh, as much as possible from our side uh, we're trying to be uh, a great support for our people because uh, you know that's just our culture that's just the lindas culture we focus on our people it's always been you know people ahead of everything else for us so that's one huge part of our focus uh second focus is our clients we always are a partner and a great partner to our clients so we see ourselves as a reflection of our clients of the needs of our clients of the kind of things that our clients need to do all of those things are all what we kind of you know have to uh, we need to be uh, the support at this time so that's our second most uh, you know we we know it's uh, an opportunity neither but we try not to behave like it's an opportunity we don't try we try not to jump uh, at it we try not to you know uh, gloat at at the opportunity uh but yes uh how we are thinking of it is in the back of our heads we are trying to uh, see the opportunity ahead and we are trying to plan we are trying to strategize both as an agency as an institution and as partners to our clients so what in the new world is going to change so in that way we are looking at uh, it as an opportunity yes true another problem is you know while we are agency they're trying to cope uh, production houses are pretty much uh, not functioning because of multiple reasons now every most agencies try to turn in house to their you know in house teams to produce a film uh, were you at an advantage considering that you already have a very well established uh, in productions at hand and how did that uh, help you as an agency see neither we have both things okay we have very mm-hmm. very very connections with uh, with uh, advertising filmmakers so where, what has helped us most is that uh, for example we know that if we have to shoot something suppose uh, you know the other day lin productions poonam who heads lin productions she shot for us she shot an ad for mm-hmm. us where she needed four different uh, setups to be shot mm-hmm. and we could easily mm-hmm. have told the client that we Shoot four set setups in this, and Poonam just okay. said that look, you know, I know four DOPs who will shoot this separately for us in their homes with their families, okay. and we'll bring it together. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and the, the kind of uh, deal that we'll structure with them will have to be like that. That you're doing just a part of the job, so you know, and we have the uh, relationship with uh, people like that. So, 
So one ad was shot with four DOPs in four different houses with very mm-hmm. good quality result, you know, as such, and not uh, any compromise there. So that's one part of Lynn production. Second part is that we ourselves as an agency know so many uh, people of the mm-hmm. industry, of filmmakers, songwriters, musicians, DOPs, art people, mm-hmm. all kinds of people. And these are all our friends. So because of them being our friends, it's lovely to just make that connection that, oh shit, okay, that person can do this for us without moving out of their house. Mm-hmm. That person will be able to do double duty, mm-hmm. both as a, you know, art person and as, and she has a kid. Okay. Okay. So we can use the kid mm-hmm. uh, like that. So she will be able to set up the art and do the, you know, we'll be able to use a kid as a cast. So mm-hmm. all of these French are now coming off, you know, great use to us. And uh, not just me, it's not just me. Like there are, uh, you know, there are about 150 people like me uh, in Lintas spread all over and they all have such relationships. So mm-hmm. that has been great like that uh, to work. You, you spoke about something uh, where, you know, a person has to take up more than one role, something that he didn't sign up for. Has there been an interesting situation like that with you or any of your teammates where you had to do something that you wouldn't otherwise? Uh, see, look, you know, <laughs> you know, let's be honest. Times are tough, you know, and uh, I'll talk about myself. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I fancy myself uh, as a creative guide, creative mentor, uh, creative uh, quality controller, all of those things. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but at this time, uh, you know, I have to think fi- business, I have to think finance, I have to think, uh, uh, you know, health, I have to think uh, office uh, safety. So mm-hmm. the goals that I have had to sort of take on, and I'm sure more people have also in their way are doing this. But here is me, I, I am like I'm multitasking like hell. So now first, how to lock down the office, mm-hmm. how to make it, how to make work from home a reality, mm-hmm. and all the different things involved in it. I was part of that, but you know, like I told you, my son was, uh, you know, I have to get my son back and I had self quarantine and stuff like that at that point. But now that we are going back to office, mm-hmm. going back to office is actually a bigger responsibility because right. all the people who are safe in their homes are now going to come to one space. Not now, not anytime soon, but eventually. Right. So eventually what is going to happen? How are we going to keep all of the, them safe? How are we going to, you know, what, how are you going to deal with the challenges that mm-hmm. clients have? That business has gone down like crazy. Their targets have suffered. Mm-hmm. You know, there are going to be financial implications of that. How to deal with all of that? This is my new reality. And that's the roles that so many roles that I, I'm having to fill up. I'm sure you're pulling that off uh, as well, uh, well, as well. <laughs> and, and another thing, you know, agencies like, you know, while you spoke about, you know, agencies are trying to co pace work from home uh, beautifully. And now the problem is most ads have begun to look painfully similar. I could literally replace a paint ad with a FMCG ad and not know who's behind what. Now, how do you move behind, beyond that? You know, we are in a lockdown situation that is, that might change, might not change, but you need to have a way forward. What is that? See, unfortunately, everybody is referencing the same, same, same things that are happening, right? Because it's a very limited world that we are living in right now. Absolutely. So everybody is trying to, uh, you know, uh, pick out the little nuances and the little emotions and things like that. But essentially, the world is very, very limited. It's like you are living, uh, you know, in a, on a, you know, uh, TV serial set of, you know, uh, everything happening of a similar kind in every TV serial like that, right? (laughs) Yes. So, yes. So, stuff like that uh, is becoming a challenge. Um, Mm -hmm. I frankly don't know how we are going to deal with it, but we are trying. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
the things that will help us, I think, is the I think is the little ways in which the different media are uh, expected, right? So there is now there is so many new media. So mm -hmm. like for example, uh, you know everybody's fond of saying TikTok, 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 TikTok. There's a very different approach to TikTok. Okay, so the media itself will dictate a different approach. You will not do a typical ad for for TikTok. You will not do a typical ad for Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a Mumbai police campaign actually, uh, and you might want to look it up. Uh, the idea of the campaign is "Main Bhi Mumbai Police." So the challenge was that uh, the police are facing flak. So many videos going on. We could see, you know, everywhere uh, of people dealing uh, what uh, people thought. Uh, that police were dealing harshly with people mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And you know, in, while the police needs to do a lot of work, the police also needs some kind of uh, you know imagery. You mm -hmm. know, there, there's kind of uh, uh, projection that the police also needs uh, to get cooperation from people, right? So we got mm -hmm. this great chat from the Mumbai police, and I'm happy to say that that campaign depended very very little actually on film. So it was completely social media. Mm -hmm. There is a video there, but the campaign is completely social media. It's gone out everywhere. It's become mm -hmm. a national campaign. Every uh, many many police uh, departments from all uh, different states have adapted the campaign for their needs. And in fact, the biggest uh, and nicest thing that happened out of that was that mm -hmm. when it was the incident of uh, Harjit Singh, the policeman who had that mm -hmm. unfortunate. You know, incident of uh, the arm. Uh, you know, uh, somebody attacked him, and actually, you know, uh, right. sort of hmm. cut his arm. Uh, the Punjab police, uh, because they were also doing our campaign, wanted us to uh, sort of have a solidarity campaign. And we thought of a very simple thing that came at that time, and it's nothing to do with the film. It's just the circumstances that you know gave rise. To that and which was that like every policeman in the Punjab police force and you know general people across the country other police people other bureaucrats sported batches mm -hmm. saying Main bhi Maharjit Singh. so so they expressed solidarity and the police could express the fact that they will not back off from their duty mm -hmm. you know even though such an incidents happen so those things you know uh, Specific things allow us uh, mm -hmm. a different kind of creativity, uh, and that flowers, and that is uh, you know quite uh, rewarding for us. Makes sense. No, another important aspect is something we discussed earlier. Uh, do you feel this is that period where agencies need to move beyond video ads and focus maybe more on providing business solutions to clients because the focus after the lockdown is going to sell a brand. Not exactly just brand building, but actually getting the consumer to pick it up. So, how do you go about that? Are you working on anything in that department? See, Nita, again, you know, we don't have to specifically focus on this because many of our clients, with many of our clients, we've been working in this very way. I'll give okay. you an example, very quick example. Mm -hmm. uh, I myself uh, was and had. Am involved in Life Boy the brand, which is actually a health brand. Mm -hmm. uh, in the entire history of Life Boy, uh, because it's a health brand, it's got you know it's got a different kind of creativity. Uh, you know, FMCG sort of thing. It's to do with health, doctors, this that. We've had a very narrow sort of way, creative way in which we could exploit it. But we have always had very very. Uh, interesting and important value addition where strategy is concerned. Mm -hmm. so I'll give you a little example about you know strategy, how how we did uh, strategy for uh, for Life Boy, uh, and this was some time ago, and it has to do with the current situation because it's, it, you know uh, Life Boy deals with germs and viruses and things like that, right? So at one point, Life Boy was expanding all over the world. Okay, it, it used to be uh, you know not such a premium brand and very simple bar of soap and all, but the ambition at Unilever and some of the great uh, client partners that had have really helped make that brand into something uh, you know quite uh, different uh, 
today. So when they gave us this challenge of how to, you know, uh, market life boy in many countries, we realized, and mm-hmm. it was an agency at that point, that the other health brands that were in operation at that point had been health brands uh, for longer and they were older health brands. Whereas Lifebuoy, which has also been in operation for very long, but was coming out with new products and in a new way, with new protection uh, as a benefit, actually could uh, talk about the fact that, see, old brands and old remedies are for old things. But everybody knew that germs and viruses, one of the things that happens in the new world is they evolve. And because viruses evolve, you need new protection, new kinds of protection. Mm -hmm. So that that strategic input that carried the brand all across the world at that point was actually given by the agency. The idea that germs and viruses are evolving. And that's Mm -hmm. why you need newer and newer protection, which is actually proven against the evolving uh, germs and viruses, which is Mm -hmm. that became such an important, you know, strategic uh, input. Mm -hmm. So that's, so we are used to dealing. We're mm-hmm. used to contributing on businesses, on marketing, and many, many, there are many instances, many of these will be under celebrated. For example, on Life Boy, the most celebrated thing is Gundapa. You know, help a child reach five. But this input, which probably has benefited uh, the brand equally or much more across the world, you never see it. We, we, we don't advertise it. We don't talk about it ever. But we always are contributing like that. So that's one part of it. Second, going forward. So I have, uh, you know, I have a pet theory here. I don't know whether it will come true or not. But my theory is that, um, you know, everybody has been talking about digital for a very long time. now. Okay. And everybody <laughs> believes that uh, going forward, just like, you know, uh, coming from this, uh, crisis that we are going to emerge out of, digital will explode. A lot of digital marketing will happen. A lot of digital products will mm-hmm. come across. I had a slightly sort of sharper and a slightly narrower uh, idea of what is going to happen. I feel that out of uh, out of uh, digital, virtual mm-hmm. will take center stage. Okay. For me. And what I mean by virtual is that uh, experiences that you know that we used to have in the physical world uh, earlier, mm-hmm. we will now be okay to have those experiences in the virtual world. So, just as an example, if you are shopping for luxury goods mm-hmm. of some mm-hmm. kind, there are two ways to shop. Either you go to a shop, you actually pick up the leather bag, you feel it, you look around, you look at it, this that, and you buy it. Otherwise, you go to a website and you just see the leather bag like that and you know you uh, you magnify it a little bit see the grain on the leather this that and all that and you say ah I like it I'll buy it now actually think about you know something in the center of it okay which is that there is there is a virtual assistant somewhere and you mm-hmm. as a shopper actually are interacting with that virtual so it could either be uh, a computer generated virtual, a virtual assistant or it could be uh, an actual person uh, who's sitting across mm-hmm. uh, you know, in a great atmosphere okay. where you can interact okay. with it, that person. The person actually displays everything to you. You have a look at it. Okay. This is one part of it. So that's virtual shopping you know, and, and a great okay. experience. You get to interact with the person. You know, the person holds the, the product up. You get to ask about a question about it. Where is it made? This that, and it's a rich experience, you know. Uh, not just reading about it or not just hearing about it, but really a real virtual experience. So that's mm-hmm. that's that's an example of a virtual experience. And I feel that all of these experiences of various kinds, not just this, but you know, they could be a similar sort of thing in uh, in the sports industry similar uh, kind mm-hmm. of thing uh, in the media industry. Many such experiences, I think, of a virtual nature will evolve. And an agency like mm-hmm. ours, who understands basically consumer behavior, 
Okay. We would like to contribute actually to these virtual experiences. So what happens in from our side is technology, which is today the easiest thing to source, we can source from anywhere for these virtual experiences. But the consumer side of this, the understanding of when a virtual assistant talks in a some in this way to the person, the person will react that way. Or if the virtual assistant appears like this and the background is in a certain way and the script of how it needs to be done, those creative inputs are a very different nature of what, you know, will be required from us. So in, so in my opinion, these are the new inputs and I've just scratched the surface and I myself am not capable of imagining all the things that we'll be asked to do. But just as an example, you know, uh, I believe virtual is going to be huge in future. You know, another thing is you, you have had fantastic long relationships with your clients. We, you said life boy, then there is a uh, Havels or Tata T. Now in the, in the change circumstances of the lockdown, do you also see a change in the way clients are behaving? Uh, do you think they are much more understanding today than what they were earlier? Another pet theory. See, uh, you know, Nita, uh, any experience that mm -hmm. you share, you go through in a shared manner with mm -hmm. anybody, always builds your bond. Whether you're sitting at home and interacting with your family, that mm -hmm. will make you your family. Whether you are facing the same challenge, such a huge challenge come from, you know, from the marketplace, from the way that it's come, uh, you know, uh, uh, because of this uh, health crisis that has happened. Everybody, mm -hmm. we and our clients are facing the same challenge and we are having, in a sense, a shared understanding together of this. Shared anything will always be beautiful. It will always have, uh, you know, it will always bring you closer. It will give you empathy for each other. Mm -hmm. It will always create the bond and a greater partnership than ever. Mm -hmm. I really like that idea that we are facing a common enemy mm -hmm. and that common enemy uh, will bring us closer together. Always. But you know, uh, you know, while you're trying to, I mean, you know, maybe make better of the relationships that you have, I, I'm hearing that a lot of pitches are back. I mean, they're happening just as much as they used to, you know, before the lockdown. Do you personally feel that it's a good idea for clients to jump boats right now? I think neither. It, the crisis has not made anybody pitch. I don't think so. I think okay. there were already some relationships that mm -hmm. were at the point of collapse or, you know, they couldn't see eye to eye for some reason or anything like that. And I think those are the reasons that the crisis has kind of enhanced those situations. They have made that those sort of breaks in the relationship more apparent. And I think that's the reason why, why, uh, why these pitches are getting announced. Uh, I have not faced uh, any uh, issue in the agency at this point uh, from any of our clients saying we would like to go on pitch right now. We have not. Fortunately, that's not happened to us. But yes, we have participated in a lot of pitches. Uh, in 40 days, more than 20. Okay. Wow. <laughs> we need to have a chat on that later. <laughs> okay, let, let's end this discussion with uh, by speaking about perhaps the most exciting work that has come out of uh, both your creative agencies. I'm sure you have your favorites. Ah. Uh, my favorite work I already told you. Uh, it's the Mumbai Police campaign that we've done. It's it's been a you know it's been. Uh, we really feel that uh, we felt uh, really one with the police uh, when we did this campaign, and we are extremely lucky. It just came. We it's pro bono work. Uh, we you know uh, of course it will be pro bono. We are not going to you know. Uh, do this work for Mumbai police, uh, you know, during this time, uh, you know, it, there's not, it's not a commercial arrangement at all. So that is one great uh, piece of work that we've done uh, on this side. Uh, on the Mullen side, um, we just uh, 
put up a piece um, which is actually um, you know I don't know whether it is uh, in creative terms great not great and all that but in terms of uh, in terms of uh, you know working alongside a client understanding what they are about uh, it was great for me and there was a small simple piece on Safola where the whole idea uh, of uh, of the piece was that uh, you know the insight came from the fact that people uh, who are locked down at home tend to eat a lot uh, and uh, Safola as a health brand would like to sort of you know get behind more healthy uh, habits uh, in eating so the whole uh, thing was called hashtag snackathon and uh, the idea was that you know people there's a snackathon at home you know, uh, during this time and how to sort of uh, get over make uh, you know tasty and good food without uh, risk to your health like that so these two uh, this piece from Malan was really enjoyable on that note let me say may you continue to bring out healthy campaigns uh, okay. during this lockdown period and afterwards as well Thank you so much, Amit, for speaking to us. It's always great talking to you. Thank you so much.